I always have a camera because I know that there's gonna be something there to photograph. The perfect shot for me, it comes out of nowhere. I wanna see something that I haven't seen before. That tree hasn't been photographed this way before or an angle of this landscape that gives you a different view of it. I just love to, to document everything. I love to capture it. And I think it's a, a good way to, to look back and, and say there was a life well lived there. I am Kevin Love. I like to say I'm a basketball player, advocate, philanthropist. You know, my ambitions as a photographer are just to keep getting better every single day. I mean, it's like basketball, right? And I use this quote a little bit as a, as a life hack, is to be relentlessly curious without fear or prejudice. And I think my curiosity is really brought out through photography, you know, how you can capture a really beautiful image or something that speaks to somebody in a different way. I've come to Portland with National Geographic, and I'm gonna be photographing and walking around with Kevin Love. He is an avid photographer as well as an all-star basketball player. We're going to explore, we're going to talk about creativity, and I'm going to give him some tips about how to make the perfect shot. Chris Graves, I mean, does amazing work. Uh, what he's done and what he shot, it's remarkable. And what he's put together um, over the course of his career, and yet he's still going, is, is amazing. Today, I wanna learn, first of all, what Chris's process is. I think it, the editing component for me is something that's solely lacking. What to look for, where to be. So I'm, I'm curious to ask these questions and, and absorb as much as I can. I think that it'll be interesting to go to a place that he's been already and show him what I want to put in a frame so people can feel the scene. I can then definitely point Kevin in directions he probably hasn't thought of before. Oh, we got like the perfect. Light. I know, it's coming, coming through. through. Right these trees are like unreal. Being in Portland, Oregon was a no-brainer for me. Being outside and being in the element, the trees have your back here. I've been coming to Portland since 2016. It's a beautiful town. Within three miles of downtown, you're in the woods. Portland just has so much culture, so much of the arts, theater, music. I mean, there's beauty surrounding us really at all times. So you have everything basically at your disposal here. So here, we're gonna do like a vertical portrait. I'm gonna photograph you first and give you some like, um, some pointers. I've been lucky enough to have positions that allow me some creativity with my own artwork. My own art practice is photographing landscapes and portraits. This is a headshot. You wanna zoom all the way in for a headshot usually just because if I'm this close to you, mm -hmm. you're gonna look like kind of circular. But as far as I get back from you and zoom in, it flattens the field. It flattens your face a little bit more so that you actually are not looking rounded. The second thing is chins up. People need to look proud in photographs. I mean, there's so much to, to consider when you're taking a photo, but also understand there's a component of it that's, you know, feel. Keep the camera above the chin so that people don't have two chins. People, people don't want, want two them. chins. Okay. It's the best <laughs> trick for okay. portraits. So this is above your chin, it's all good. Flowers in the back, mm -hmm. fully zoomed in. So I, I can notice that the camera is not uh, fully uh, straight, yeah. so I would like get completely level. Check it out. So if you like, I have a level in the camera. Mm -hmm. So you do, you have this too, but I can see where my middle is. So I know I'm below at, right, right, and then right, it goes right. to the middle. That looks good. <laughs> All right, we're, we're good, we're Gucci. Do you get to photograph during the season or do you usually wait? So actually it's, it's funny you asked that because my, my therapist <laughs> of all people was like, how are you gonna stay creative during the season? I was like, I guess I gotta bring my cameras. But you're coming to play in Portland against the Blazers. So like Douglas firs and pine trees. And yeah. like that is such a big part of, oh, that of makes who sense. we are. Uh -huh. He would say, all right, wood, but that can mean you that know, can mean a table. Things. That can mean yeah, like can mean anything. anything. I mean, it's a it's a good prompt. I think the process of taking photographs and, and photography for me is definitely grounding. Something I do in a lot of ways for for therapy and also a way to document things and understand what I was going through through that time. Photography as meditation is pretty much why I do it. I try to focus on what's in front of me, zone out and see something I've never seen before because I won't see it again. So I have to make these photographs while I'm here.
what I try to capture. I think nature is a, is a and landscapes in general are a major component. It's a beautiful process to really take in nature and take in the landscapes that you want to shoot. You know, for me, I've, I've dealt with acute anxiety my entire life and have tried to find ways to, you know, express myself or, or change my relationship with my, my mental health in a major way. Being outside is a calming place for me. You know, take in whatever I can around me and understand there's a lot of beauty and just feel it. The land is always kind of extraordinary, which makes it hard to make photographs because everyone can capture what they consider an extraordinary moment. But when I'm here, I'm not thinking about any of that stuff. I'm just here to kind of be free make the pictures, go back later, see what I got, and then hopefully I got one good thing. So here what we're gonna do is we're gonna like make a vertical photograph of that waterfall. So we do ISO 50 and F32, and we're gonna have a three second exposure. I'm gonna do a two second timer, yeah. and then we're gonna click, wait, do our three seconds in our head. One, two, three, comes back on screen, and now you have moving water. And now we're gonna do one, with a higher ISO so that we can freeze the motion in the water. We're gonna lower our f-stop a bit so that we know we can get it sharp. Click on that, one, two, three, and then another instant shot. Boom. So now we have two shots. You can wow. get your water clean, like yeah. sharp, and in motion. That's beautiful. Just like that. I love that. I feel like I could learn so much in 10 minutes just from doing that. It'd be amazing would it be put it at like half court. It's almost like a guy's running. Check this out. We'll do it. We'll do another little test here. You're gonna tell me when that hits like zero and I'll start walking, okay? All right, go ahead. I mean, I think it's kind of cool. And that's like the power of just like being free with it. You can't really tell what you'll get later because it's digital, but that's what we have the computers. It's good to have this on location. Yeah, I've been using a Dell XPS for at least the last seven years. I've had two already. It's a bright screen. Even in the daytime, we can see what we're doing. I mean, which is really quite nice to me. All right, so you told, you told me not to take a picture of that, so. Yeah, I wanted to show you when this thing is open. Like, this is like kind of bringing it back to the last century of photography in okay. a little bit of a way. Oh. This is a, a four by five inch view camera. Hold down under here. We have our bellows. Wow. And that is it. Okay. Now I take the phone. Yeah, as, as simple as it is. Visualization is, is so key. I mean, every place that you go brings another, you know, different set of complications or things that are tough to, to, to shoot and you have to find the right spot. You can see what's oh, happening. Yeah, it's all right. upside down. Every game, every series, everything is going to pose a new challenge. You, you can sense when you're in the right place. See how that focus works? Boom. OK, so now we're locked in. Just in life in general, I don't think it's any different. That level of visualization comes into it in a major way. So I don't think it's any different than photography. So like you can yeah. see your aperture. That's what, the, that's what your camera's doing automatically. There's only three things cameras do. So you have a sensor, you have an aperture and a shutter. That's what a camera is. That's Everything I mean. with yep. those basics. You know, we always say art imitates life. I feel like that is pretty spot on with and transcends any walk of life or you know, any medium or any, uh, anything somebody's doing as, as, as their work. Time the exposure, it opens, leave it 30 seconds, and then we close it. I think there's a lot of parallels. I think basketball is, is, a, is a true art, art form. It's fluidity. It's you know, almost like watching a, a, a ballet in a way, something beautiful, the arts. You're happy, watching it unravel right in front of you, and life is that way. It's not a spectator sport, right? You have to go out there. You have to expose yourself to different things, and you have to express yourself. Three, two, one. You can see everything out there. That's your negative. I mean, like, that's, this is kind of the magic of photography, right? You can see exactly what it is. And then we'll put this on the computer later. It's only getting better for creatives because we have so much access to so many programs and ways of thinking on the computer end. This is what it looked like in the field. You can make a curve. I'm so curious how this is going to turn out. We are able to do whatever we want. Because that's a negative and we're photographing a negative, I want it to be a positive. Right. right. You can use your tone curve. You want to just invert that curve, right? These days, starting in photography is easier than it has been because I think that the cost has gone down in starting. I mean, if you have a phone and you can't afford a camera, use your phone to make the photographs. If you do have access to a camera, take it out and never put it down. I did not expect that. It's so sharp that you can like pretty much see that sharpness, it's right? Humbling. I mean, look at that. It's like so sharp. It turned out fun, that's fun. Okay, we have what we the portraits we made earlier today, but pretty like, eh, you don't wanna be showing this to people who are like, this is your histogram and it's all along the bottom end of your, of your photograph here. 
Use the web to learn more about photography, find artists that you like and follow them. So a lot of research and then going out and making photographs, terrible photographs until you make one good one. You want that to be more even. You can do it like here and just expose to where you want it and you're getting your curve back. And within a minute, we've gone from a kind of before that looks like that, which I would consider completely unusable, to an after that looks like that. There's so much out there, but it doesn't mean that there's no need for more. I think that there's a need for as much art in the world as humanly possible. Everybody should be out there making something creative. The creativity has broadened in the last few years. So whatever your thing is, just get into it.